Let me tell you the story of how we ended up living off-grid in rural Portugal. Six years ago, we decided that the normal rat race was not for us and that we needed a change. So we started saving up, we bought a camper, and then after a while we packed up our newborn baby Puck into this camper and we drove down south looking for a better life. After exploring Portugal and looking for land, we found this property, which was a diamond in the rough. And when I say rough, I mean really, really rough. It was completely overgrown. The bushes were at least two meters tall in most places. And the only thing that we could see was a small track to the neighbor's land, a small field at the bottom. And we also found the big well that still had plenty of water in it, even though it was already summer. People around us were very skeptical, most of them saying it was too much work. This property had been for sale for quite a while, and that was because those who had viewed it before us thought it was too much work, which I totally understand. <laughs> but this meant that we could get a good deal on this property and we took a chance. We moved our camper onto the land and started clearing that day. First, Martin started on the bottom terrace where we now have the garden and then slowly moving up to find a good spot for our yurt. So up here, there's uh, two or three bigger terraces and I'm walking up what used to be the road all the way to the top and that we're hopefully going to reinstate by the end of the year, but as you can see it's all overgrown. So 20, 25, 30 years of neglect is what gets you this. Here you can see the outline that Martin made for the deck that we're gonna build for the yurt. So we're gonna chop those pines um, already before autumn obviously because we need to start building. But we obviously ran into some problems again um, because we got the cheapest wood and then it's not always perfect. This is also when I started documenting our journey, which was awkward to say the least, but I like to think I have gotten a little bit better over the years. Because we knew building a house would take some time and we had a lot of cleaning to do, we decided it was a good idea to put up a temporary structure to live in in that time. We had settled on a yurt because they are sturdy and comfortable to live in year-round. While waiting on the paperwork for the land to be finished, we had ordered a yurt in Russia, thinking it would arrive in a few months. Towards the end of summer, we had a platform dug and started on a deck for the yurt. Building was totally new for us at this point, so it took us quite a while and we learned a lot in the process. We've only done one beam a day because it's getting up in the 30s every day.
painted them. Uh, we put uh, we over there. It's now all in a tidy straight line. Um, so for now it's, fin it's finished. We're really happy with it. Uh, After a few months and a lot of phone calls and messages and emails and excuses, we started to realize that the year that we thought we had bought was not coming. We didn't have an immediate backup plan, so that winter we stayed in our camper, which was less than ideal because we didn't really have any heating in there and it was getting a little bit cramped with a toddler in there as well. But we made it work somehow. And then with the help of Martin's parents, we were able to get a new yard, this time from the Netherlands, which we finally put up towards the end of the winter. This is what the yurt looks like today. As you can see, we put tarps over the top, um, and that's mostly to keep out the the rain from uh, from the crown because um, we haven't been able to put in the windows into the crown. The crown is the top. Finally, have running water in the yurt. This yurt has created such a lovely space for us to stay warm and dry while we clear more of the land and find a place to build our forever home. Because the summers get so hot here, we also decided to build an outdoor kitchen close to our yurt. It has evolved and grown over the years and provided us with a great space to enjoy our home cooked meals. So welcome to our new outdoor kitchen. I'll show you around. We have some very exciting new features that were all made possible by our new solar system. Uh, we have a little bit of a mismatch of different types of cabinets because we got almost everything second hand except for this little IKEA number here. Um, we have this old kind of grubby looking, that's all my fault, uh, oven and stove that works really well. It's second hand as well. Our little IKEA washing station, one of the most exciting features. The Our fridge. new fridge. Um, and then here, as in most kitchens, we kind of had a dead corner. So we decided to put our ah. washing machine, which is also secondhand, um, to put it here. And then we have the opening on the other side.
We have a few pets to keep us company. We have our dog Louis, who has been with us since he was a tiny little puppy. <laughs> Epic was a little baby. <laughs> We also have Marie, who we got as the tiniest kitten. Uh, I think she was a rat of a litter and she was very small, underfed, but we nursed her back to health and now she's a happy mouse hunter for us. Okay, set the mommy in the We also got Antoinette to keep Marie company. At the beginning of 2020, we were joined by Sissy. She was a stray hunting dog, um, but she was already quite old, so we had to say goodbye to her last summer. And I still miss her daily. Pushed it away and now she's just laying on the on the wood floor. So I don't know why she does that, but <laughs> I try to give her nice things. Yes, you see? Yeah. Next to our pets we have some chickens. When most people think about homesteading, they immediately think animals. Uh, they wanna have all the goats and sheep and cows and all the things, but we wanted to keep it small. We have always operated with the idea that we only take on what we can, not what we would like. Because there is not really any infrastructure for animals on this land, as of yet. We have kept it simple and only keep a few chickens. Martin has built a beautiful coop with mostly free materials, such as pallets and leftover roofing. Um, and this has kept our chickens safe at night for the last few years. They get to free range when possible on our land, um, but we also keep them locked up sometimes because they can get annoying. For the chickens to use and come in and out of the chicken coop, it's like a, just a loose bar. All the leftover stuff that I have. Almost two years ago, we also added another human member to our family, baby Bo. Feels really weird to say this already. Um, some of you had even already guessed it in the comments, um, but I'm pregnant. Um, I'm about eight weeks now, so I'm in the first trimester still. It's also a really hard period because some people don't have it that hard, but other people do. I'm one of them. Uh, I get really quite sick, um, nauseous all day, uh, very tired, I'm just in the couch, on the couch, in the bed, trying not to throw up, so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard couple weeks. But after these rough nine months, we now have baby Bo with us, who has already become a fun little toddler. Yeah! 
Wat doe jij dat goed? Zo! Wauw! Wat een mooie planten, hè? Waar gaan we naartoe? At the end of our first summer, we cleaned our main well, which was a challenge to say the least. We had borrowed a ladder that would get all the way down, but to get everything out, we just used a rope, a simple pulley and a bucket. Because we could only yeah. attach it to the concrete beam over the well, Martin had to pull up every bucket and I had to pull every bucket over the wall to dump it on the other side. This was very heavy work and took us about a week to get done. But we did learn a lot about technique, which made cleaning our other wells a lot easier. Yeah. And this is the view I have the outside world. Fast. The reward for all this hard work did take a while. Only in December did it start filling up again when we had a big storm with lots of rain. It's Tuesday right now, uh, the day after the heavy rain and we have some very exciting news because our well is filling up again. Yesterday we could see a little stream coming out uh, pretty close to the bottom uh, and it was flowing quite, quite well and now we can see some other ones as well and it's come up about a meter already so hopefully in the next couple of days we have we have a full well um so that's really exciting i'm so happy to have water on the on the property again <laughs> So this is what the well looks like today, the Wednesday afternoon. One of the few machines we have bought for our farm is this digger. We have used it to level out a few more areas for our living space. We build a culvert under our road and some more things that you will see soon. It might not be the most obvious tool to buy for our farm, as the first thing that people think of for our farm is a tractor. But this digger has been the best investment we have ever made for our land. There's water. And there's that ook water. Wow.
Cleaning the land is honestly still an ongoing process as it is three hectares in total. Every winter, Martin takes a few days to work with the strimmer to cut down more of the leftover bushes in order to reduce fire risk, to give the oak trees some room to breathe and to clear areas where we want to build infrastructure. Hopefully in a few years, we will be done with this though. Water is essential anywhere, but especially here with our very dry summers. So to improve on the land and the water retention, we wanted to dig a few ponds on the property. Martin started digging a big pond at the bottom of our valley, where the little field used to be. He hit an old channel that does a great job at filling the pond when it rains, but also turned out to be a great struggle to work with. It created a hole on one side of the pond, which we tried to fill in a few different ways while it was raining or cold, which was not fun. When these attempts didn't work, Martin had to take more drastic action and dig it out completely to fill it back up properly. This problem is fixed now, but the point where the water comes into the pond is still an issue. When the pressure drops, the water flows back into the channel, only leaving a little bit of water in the pond. In the future, we will dig out the pond further in the hopes of fixing this issue. I think our pond saga is a great example of how things take time, that you will always hit unexpected obstacles, and most importantly, that not everything is as easy as it seems on YouTube. It is important for us to show all sides of working on our land, as it is not always smooth sailing. Actually, it almost never is, but we want to share this side of the story so that those who might venture into this adventure at some point know what they can expect. And today uh, we finally hit upon a channel of water. Um, I moved some rocks uh, and uh, they are in the middle of a clay field, <laughs> so to say. Um, so it's the only c a few rocks uh, that are in there. And once I lifted them up, uh, we have a little hole of water here now. And uh, that was just the remaining water, or the water that was remaining in the channel that flowed in here. And you can see on that end that there is still a little hole left. Um, and you can see water in there, so we have to pluck that side. And um, hopefully with the new rain that is forecast for next week, or the, the coming week, uh, it will fill up. So as you can see, it's still filling up, just not as quickly as Martin had hoped. Uh, this is the other side from where we were filming yesterday. Okay, we're back in the hole. Um, this is our uh, next attempt to plug the, the hole. Um, it's like the channel that ran through here and uh, that has stopped draining a couple of days ago. So we should be able to just put in some uh, flex cement. It's cement de cola, is it called? It's uh, a glue cement. The main goal is to make the hole as small as possible that's left. And uh, then we'll pack the whole thing with clay remove all the rocks and um, and that should uh, should make the seal later on um, that's the attempt we'll see how it goes um, and the chicken is also getting involved uh. yeah thanks for your input yeah
In addition to the big pond at the bottom, we have the goal of digging several smaller ponds around the land. We have one smaller one next to our road, but this one also needs some work in the future. And now on to the garden. We came here with the vague idea of becoming self-sufficient. And while we no longer believe in this myth, we have enjoyed learning about gardening and improving on our growing every year. Starting with the tiniest garden that didn't really amount to anything. We quickly expanded to grow more the next year. We have worked hard on the soil, tilling it a few times and adding organic matter to break up the heavy clay soil that we have to work with. Next to growing plants from seeds, we also happily buy plugs from local sellers and I like to try new varieties every year just for the fun of experimentation and to try and find the perfect varieties for our situation. While we don't think that we can grow all our own food, I get immense joy from working with the soil and the plants and the fresh veggies yeah. that we get to harvest and eat as a result of our hard work. She's learning. Behind me here, we made a perennial bed and it was time for that because we needed more berry bushes so that the kids can snack on them while I'm gardening. This will forever be my favorite shot of the bow.
It has also been a great pleasure to teach our children to work with plants and to plant seeds and get them involved in all the harvesting that we have to do in the garden and see them grow up over the years in the garden. <laughs> Because we want to produce some of the very typical Portuguese products, we also decided that we wanted to start beekeeping because Portuguese flower honey is some of the most amazing honey that you will ever taste. So we started with a few boxes with colonies in them. It was a whole saga, you can see that in other videos. Next to buying bees, we have also caught a few swarms, which is always very exciting. Sometimes we have to put in a little effort into catching them and sometimes they just come where we don't even expect them. This hole enables us to harvest some amazing honey at the end of the season and we get to enjoy that and sometimes we share that with others. Behind me here it's dark and this is the moment that we need to harvest the honey because otherwise all the bees that we have around here will come onto the honey and that's not going to be fun. So Approved. Nice. Is it toddler approved? Poop in my book. Yeah. Yeah. And now in your mond? It's lekker, eh? And then not nog a finger. <laughs> When we bought the property, there was a vague indication of olive trees as it was marked on the map, but we could only see one or two in between the bushes. So we cleaned the olive field, which was a lot of hard work, and we had to prune all the olive trees quite heavily because they were covered in lichen and they were just not having a good time. But we have harvested over the years, starting with a small harvest just for eating olives, going on to harvesting the olives so that we could have our own olive oil and also to sell on to some of you guys. We also have improved our technique majorly over the years, starting with a small rake and just a small net to really learning how to move the nets efficiently and teaching those who help us. And we also added a machine into the mix to make everything much more efficient. My hope is that in 20 years we'll be a typical Portuguese family where we come to harvest with the whole family and just go through our olive field working as a team, as an oiled machine, and just get this beautiful part of the winter done. Okay, um, well, it, uh, this year uh, for our olive harvest we will be able to do an, uh, 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 much more with the two of us, or 
with fewer people because we have this this uh, nice little gift that uh, I got from my parents for my birthday which was yesterday um, and uh, it works really great um, it uh, shakes really fast and therefore it uh, knocks out all the olives uh, if they are ripe enough and um, we hope that we are able to uh, harvest much more this year than the 200 kilos that we got last year right right that's it. Okay. Over the years, we have taken a few opportunities to buy extra pieces of land. First, we bought a small vineyard where we also keep our bees. <laughs> Everything okay? <laughs> nee. Okay. So today, we want to show you something very exciting. Um, you, this might not look familiar for you because... <laughs> it isn't. It isn't. We've never shown you this before. We only recently bought it. Uh, but we bought a small vineyard in our area. It's not very big. It's a little less than an acre. How much is an acre? It's it's an acre. I it's think. an acre. Yeah. So, and there's a couple olive trees and an orange tree that needs a lot of loving. Uh, but yeah. Well, Puck already started on, <laughs> on her first here, so <laughs> she's content. Uh, it, it still has some oranges, but yeah. it needs some work. Yeah. Uh, as to the vines, so we're gonna also take you along in uh, how we're gonna trim them and everything. And uh... shoo, I'll be. What a beauty. Yeah. What a beauty. That's echt zo'n. Uh, alsof. Zoals ze het op de reclame laten zien. Also not super acidic. Mm -mm. A, a slight hint of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Let's yeah. let's go with that. What a blast you get. It's it's white wine. It's not not very special, I don't think. It's also it could not be the, better. It could be better, but it's also not the worst white wine I've ever had. That's that's definitely true. Yeah. Again, I could drink this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we have your December all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> and at the end of 2021, we bought a few overgrown terraces from our neighbor. 
um, because this had a well on it and some extra olive trees. After some hard work of cleaning this, it has become my favorite part of the property because it feels so magical over there. Pulling down the brambles from the tree. Yes. Uh, so this cool. this one's massive. Yeah, this is a massive tree. It's very. It's become very tall. We're still debating if they just let it grow so tall, or if they it really hasn't been used for very very long. But it's I would say five meters. Six, maybe even. Well, two. I, I think it might be on the top, it might be eight. <laughs> we'll set over seven. <laughs> and the brambles come at least halfway. A very nice security uh, feature for our water security and uh, gives peace of mind uh, especially in a dry year such as this year um, so yeah um, I would do this again <laughs> <laughs> would recommend <laughs> yeah would recommend Last year we started a new phase of our project here on our homestead but this is slow going Martin started creating a road to the top of our land so that it can be accessed by necessary vehicles and he started digging a possible area for our house build. But this project takes time, sometimes longer than we would like because we do all the work ourselves while also doing other necessary work on the farm and taking care of our now two young children. Nap.
that went well. It's a bit sketchy in certain places, but uh, if I can widen those and uh, get them a little bit more compacted over time, it will be easier. Yeah, it works. Ja. Ja. Dat, dat, dat is dus wat we uit moeten vinden. Uh, maar ja. eerst al deze brush aan de kant uh, trekken met de graver. Eerst maar sprei maken en dan maar eens kijken wat we, wat we weg kunnen krijgen. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning, ja. Ja, wel. <laughs> so a few days ago I started clearing the spot where we would like to build the house in the future um, and uh, of course we don't have an exact plan yet uh, how the house will look like um, and um, uh, how big it's gonna be we have ideas but uh, it's important that we clear the land first we level it out and uh, see how far we can dig into this uh, hillside uh, before we hit the massive uh, stones, the schisto stones that we can't remove, maybe, possibly. Or, um, yeah, I just wanna see how much work it would be to, uh, to level this out and uh, make it into a nice spot for the house to be built. So that's why we are digging without a plan for a house yet. This is where, this where is it's why, clear? Yeah, th this is why we want to build here. The best spot. Terrible. Yeah, the views suck. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's quite a difference. It's like, uh, I'm two meters higher than you. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is to dig into this hillside and see what we find. And then we can make the plants a little bit more concrete. And before the summer, Martin started digging the area where we hope to build a house in the upcoming years. Our digger did break down this November, so that's not great. And we're still working on getting that fixed, but we hope to get it started soon. We had some help from our friend to get it all leveled out and now we're all up to date. A few years of very hard work and also lots of fun, growing and learning. We're starting a new phase in our journey here on the land and it will be slow going but I can't wait to see where we will be in another four years. <laughs>